Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update pup date time, 32 months. It's been a long time since I've done this style of video. Uh, I've been pretty busy with life in general, and then also this video was becoming, or this style of video was becoming so repetitive, I felt like, because he wasn't going through as many changes. So I didn't want to kind of bore you guys with uh, just very small details. So it's been probably five months since the last update pup date video. And uh, lots changed, a lot's happened in this amount of time. If you're new to this channel, this is Bull Mastiff ND. My name is Sean. And this style of video is the kind of video that kind of made this channel, I feel. I started doing weekly update pup dates with Tua from pretty much the day we brought him home, updating you on his size, his height, his weight, what we're feeding him, what we're doing to socialize him, his drooling, his energy levels, and his barking. If you're interested in the Bull Mastiff breed, I have a whole log of information week by week as he was growing up, up to a year old, and uh, you can kind of go and follow my journey with my Bull Mastiff puppy week by week and you would know what to expect for growth or any of those things that I named, and then I went month by month after that, and like I said, now I kind of just do these periodically, it's been a while for an update pup date video, but if you are interested in the Bull Mastiff breed, uh, go ahead, check out all my videos, and stick around for this one. So the first thing that I'm going to touch on in this update pup date is his size because I know that's kind of the one thing that people like to know about the most. So we just had Tua in at the vet a week or two ago, got him on the scale, he's 32 months old now, and he was 172 pounds guys. And uh, this is very, very big for a bull mastiff. Generally those males, you know, if they touch like 150, which is what his dad was, that's kind of at the high end. So two is a very, very big boy. He's outgrown both of his parents. I'm not sure where his size and his weight is coming from. Just kind of one of those fluke things, just like people, you know, some people are able to reach seven feet for no reason. And uh, so, some people just stay uh, under, under six foot. So it's kind of just one of those freak things. His parents, neither one of them were very, very large like that. So I'm not, not too sure. Uh, but the vet even said, you know, he's carrying the weight very well. He's he's still pretty lean. Uh, so interesting. I, I think eventually he'll touch, you know, 180 if he ever started putting on some bad weight. Maybe 185. Pretty crazy. He's also on the very tall side for a bull mastiff. Generally, those males, you know, if they touch 28 inches at the shoulder, 29, that's kind of where they peak out. And two is closer to 31. So he's very tall, very heavy. Uh, the last time I gave you guys an update, I believe he was 164 pounds. So he's still kind of averaging about a pound, a pound and a half per month, uh, like clockwork. So we'll see where this ends up. Probably won't do another update, update video until he's about two. So we'll see where he goes from 172 pounds in the next five, six months here. Uh, super interesting. Just very, very large dog, very large bull mastiff. Uh, much much larger than uh, the breed standard would call for. The next thing that we will touch on is food. What do I feed Tua? Well, if you're familiar with this channel at all and you've seen any of the videos in the past, you know that I do a mixture of raw food and kibble, and I kind of slowly worked my way into this, starting out very slow when I added the raw food. I've made a number of videos on this in the past. But currently, I'm kind of all over the map as far as like the ratio goes. Some meals I feed him 100% raw. Some meals it's kind of more like a 70-30% split. 30% of that being kibble, 70% uh, of that being raw. It just kind of depends what I have time for, uh, what we have for, for food available at the time, things like that. But I would say in general, we're, we're never less than like 60% of, of uh, a meal being raw food. So it's, it's mostly raw food. And uh, kind of got into this uh, when we got to a never fed raw to any of my dogs in the past. Uh, just started doing research and found out how good 
the raw food is for the dog, for their skin, for their coat, general well-being and health. Uh, I would encourage everybody to look into raw food diet. It is a little bit more expensive to do it this way, depending you know how much the meat costs in your area and things like that. But there is cheaper options to go. Uh, I've also purchased food from a raw food company in the past that works out very good, but that's also more on the expensive side as well. And uh, ultimately, just do your own research, feed your dog whatever works for you and for your dog. But uh, raw food is definitely something I would encourage everyone to look into. Socialization is the next thing that we'll touch on. And I always harp on this channel how socialization, at least in my opinion, is the most important thing that you can do for you and your dog to set both of you up for success. You want to expose that dog to everything from the day that you bring him home or her, uh, whether that's people, animals, places, things, sights, smells, anything you can think of, bring that dog in the car, to stores, to other people's homes, introduce them to new dogs, cats, anything you can think of. And we did a lot of that with Tua growing up, and uh, he's turned out to be great with uh, all dogs, animals, people. Uh, we For this, the last few months, this last summer, I guess, we had a lot of good socialization. We had a family reunion, and he was involved with that. Uh, just today, or the other day, we had uh, my, my daughter's fourth birthday party. There was a lot of people over for that as well. And uh, just around a, a lot of new people, and Tua does great with people, loves people, uh, almost to a fault, like I say. He's definitely slowing down as far as like his initial crazy excitement when people get here. If you guys are familiar with my channel, I'd say how, you know, the first 10, 15 minutes, I almost have to keep him on a leash because he gets so excited for new people. And uh, he still does, but it's not as intense as he used to be in the past, so I, I don't really have to leash him a whole lot anymore. Uh, not that he would ever, like, jump on people, but he's just such a big dog, it's almost too much uh, if you've never seen him kind of thing. And he can step on your feet and kind of run into legs and things like that. So he is very good with people, very good with dogs, animals, uh, any, any that we've ever encountered anyway. And I chalk that up to all the socialization we did. Uh, when he was growing up and he was a puppy. So treat that socialization like a part-time job when you bring your dog home and they should have a great uh, personality, great demeanor with people and animals. Drooling is the next thing that we'll touch on. This is a huge uh, topic for people that are interested in the breed. I actually just made a video on this recently if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, Tua is a drooler. Bull Mastiffs are droolers. But I don't think it's like a huge massive deal most of their drooling is around uh, kind of three areas, and that would be when they're eating, you know, before, during, and after. Uh, drinking water is probably the most intense because that water gets in their jowls and then drips for a while after. And then uh, also heat exposure. When they're outside panting heavily because of heat, then the drool really starts to form as well. Beyond that, when your dog is just sitting inside in the air conditioning and they're comfortable, there's no drool at all. So I think, uh, I think the drool in general is kind of overblown, especially if you're used to a large dog that's pretty messy around the food uh, and water bowls anyway. The, uh, the drooling is kind of similar to that. I mean, definitely on a more intense level, but if you have your dog inside all day in the air conditioning, you're not even going to see your dog drool except for around mealtime. So drooling is definitely an issue if you're a very, very clean person or you're used to just small dogs. But in, in general, I feel like it's overblown. And maybe I got lucky with Tua. Maybe uh, he doesn't drool as much as most bull mastiffs. But uh, for me, it's, it's pretty typical. You know what's going to happen. You can have a rag handy or paper towels or whatever. Energy is the next thing that we'll touch on. And uh, bull mastiffs in general are known to be uh, typically on the lower, lower energy scale compared to most breeds. And uh, I, I just want to say, give kind of a disclaimer, when you bring your dog home, don't expect your bull mastiff to be on the lower energy scale immediately. That dog's going to be a puppy for the first year, year and a half. It is going to have, you know, some higher energy moments. They're going to chew. You're going to have to exercise this dog. However, as they approach that age two, they definitely start to slow down. I've really noticed in the last five, six months, honestly, guys, with Tua, how much he's slowed down. 
as we're pro approaching that age three, he uh, pretty much just lays around and sleeps all day. He definitely never turns down an opportunity to go for a walk or go run around in the backyard. But we limit those walks to, you know, I'd say approximately a mile. And if it's very hot, we won't walk him at all because he, he gets gassed so quickly. Uh, but sprinting around the backyard and stuff, he still enjoys that. Uh, I wouldn't say he goes for more than 15 minutes of, you know, good hard kind of running and playing around the backyard before he gets gassed out. But it's also summertime. When it's 80, 90 degrees, guys, these dogs will get gassed out fairly quick. In the wintertime, when the weather's cooler, he uh, enjoys that a lot more. and He can stay outside a lot longer and play. I've made lots of videos of him running around in our backyard with snow. And he seems to enjoy being outdoors a lot more in the fall or in the winter. Really loves the snow. But summertime, you know, you kind of limit his heat exposure and things like that. Make sure he has plenty of water. And he's kind of an inside dog as soon as those temperatures start approaching 90 degrees. And he, he kind of prefers that. So energy for a bull mastiff when young, I would say, is, you know, fairly high. But as they age and mature, it definitely goes down to... Uh, not much at all except for you know 15 minutes to a half hour a day if you want to kind of get them out on a walk or run around with them barking is the last thing that we'll touch on bull mastiffs in general are known to not be barkers they're known as the silent watchdog that's kind of what they were bred for way back in the day and uh tua for the most part uh falls right in line with that he doesn't bark much if there's something going on in like the neighbor's yard or something and we're in our backyard, he can't see on the other side of our fence. We have a big privacy fence and he'll he'll let out barks at that. But that's kind of it. Uh, every once in a while if we're inside and he's watching out the window or something and there's a dog or something across the street, he might let out some little wolves. But But it's not like full-on barking uh, so overall I would say he's pretty silent and kind of right in there with that breed standard of not being much of a barker that is all I have though on this update update 32 months uh, I know it's been a long time I probably didn't cover everything but I feel like I hit all the main points uh, I probably won't do another update update until he turns three would kind of be my initial thoughts, but we'll go ahead and see. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Haven't heard from a lot of you regulars for a while here because I haven't been posting as many videos. But uh, hopefully we can kind of keep this going for years to come as Tua grows and, and ages and we find out different things about the breed. And I uh, hope you're enjoying the channel and learning about the breed. Thanks. Take care, guys.